the Monkey Basement Productions. Monkey Baby! Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Just Give Me a Few Minutes. I'm Mike Mann. And for those of you who are only listening... If this works out, I've got a camera on my computer that I'm using right now. If this works out, I'm going to post it on YouTube. So we'll see how it works. I don't know. I don't know how. Seems like there's a little bit of a delay, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I hope you enjoyed my last episode. Uh, it was about September 11th, about my day on September 11th. And a couple people listened to it that I know personally, and they really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's stuff they didn't realize, or like one person was way too young to really remember a lot of it. <clears throat> and I played that George Bush speech of him at Ground Zero with the megaphone, and that speech kind of turned me on George Bush. And one girl... Uh, that's a friend of our family. Her name is Emma. She, uh, she said that speech gave her chills and that made me feel good. Um, the younger generation just doesn't, you know, just doesn't remember it. You know, like my daughter is 19 years old. She was six years old at the time. So she doesn't really remember it. I played a buddy of mine from Australia he was uh, 11 or 12, I think he said at the time. And uh, he gave a nice little perspective of of them in Australia and another country. And I put some uh, Emma, the, the girl I was just talking about, sent me um, a link of other countries' perspective of September 11th. And it was five or six, seven different countries. It's on my blog at at word just give me a few minutes dot wordpress dot com and um you can check that out over there and it's it was really really interesting so go check it out um after september eleventh two thousand one this country was united like it's never been united before this 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 episode is in was inspired by the last when that episode went live, that episode went live, I think, the morning of September 11th here in Ohio, or, or late September 10th, early September 11th. <clears throat> but uh, this, I, I heard a story on the news. I, I started prematurely. I heard a story on the news that prompted this episode, and it kind of really infuriated me. So I, I got... <laughs> Four pages here of stuff that I want to talk about, and I want to try to get it done in like 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to do my best. I've never done this with the camera. Usually I can stop it. I can cut it. I can edit it how I want. It may be a little more difficult with video, but we'll see. But after September 11th, 2001, this country was united. Like it's never been united before. Everywhere you looked... There was an American flag on windows of cars, hanging on porches. Uh, there wasn't a flagpole standing that wasn't flying the red, white, and blue stars and stripes of old glory. <clears throat> this country was so supportive, and we sent our men and women into Afghanistan to fight the terrorists that brought down the World Trade Center. This country, let's see, I miss, I missed my place. Sorry. Um... Then I got up one morning. Um, this was only maybe a week ago from today's date. And I heard a new, uh, let's see, I got up in the morning and got in my car to go to work, and I hear a story on my local news that Ohio lawmakers want to pass a law. Now, follow me here. This is kind of confusing at first. They want to pass a law that prohibits a landlord or uh, a community 
like uh, organization, um, property owners, what are the, the homeowners association? They want to pass a law that prohibits those people from telling you you have to take down your flag. And it has happened. There, I live in Columbus, Ohio, and there's a suburb of Columbus called Whitehall. And it happened to a woman um, here at a condo. Um, here's the bill. Right. All this right here, if you could see right there. That's the story. Um, landlords and apartment. Let's see. Landlords, apartment and condo complexes and homeowners associations will no longer be able to demand the removal of an American flag under the bill introduced at the Ohio State House. The bill introduced by State Representative Ann Gonzalez also covers Blue Star and Gold Star banner service flags. So nobody can tell you to take those down. She says you want to protect you want to be able to protect protect sorry. You want to be able to protect patriotism. And there are so many individuals here in Ohio that really show their pride. The Westerville Republican, Ann Gonzalez, says she wanted to help speed up the process with a similar bill that was introduced in the Ohio Senate by Senator Bill Coley. Uh, she was also prom prompted to take action after a landlord demanded that a Whitehall woman remove an American flag from her home she's rented for 36 years. Um. And Gonzalez goes on to say, this is a common sense change to the law. And I'm surprised that there wasn't a law already in place. And so am I. But this is America. What's the, what's the problem to fly an American flag? It's your country. I mean, if you're flying another country's flag, living here in America, and they want you to take that down, that's a little more understandable. But this is not. Gonzalez hopes to get the bill passed by the end of the year before the end of the current General Assembly. It makes me so sick that this has to be brought up to anybody in their right mind. Why would anybody tell somebody that they could not fly an American flag in America? Especially when you're a veteran, fireman, policeman, patriot. So I googled stories. And when I heard this on the radio, I Googled some stories and it's actually happening a lot. So I got a small fraction of stories here. Just, a, just a bit. I mean, I Googled it and a bunch came up and I read like the first three or four and that, oh, that drove me crazy. Okay. Here, McLean, Virginia, McLean, Virginia. A U.S. Marine combat veteran had been told to take down his American flag. He flies outside of his condominium. He contacted WUSA-9 just after he did. The condo changed its tune. Paolo Advancula. I can't, I don't, Paolo Advancula. Well, that, we'll go with that. Had been flying his... Marine Corps and U.S. flag outside of his condo for months until security told him to take it down. Security says, quote, you can't fly the Marine or American flag. The American flag only during a holiday. Fourth of July is coming up. You can fly it then. But right now you can't fly it. He said, there shouldn't be a rule. It's an American flag. It's freedom of speech. Advancula, a Marine combat veteran who fought in Operations Iraq and Enduring Freedom, was stunned. Then the guard actually said, don't try to pull a fast one because I myself am a combat veteran and see this rule at the rotunda for... Th what? Oh, and this rule has been at the rotunda for 30 plus years. The rotunda condominiums went on to tell him why he needed to take down his American flag. Advancula said that the condominium told him he couldn't fly an American flag because 
It's a community filled with international residents and might offend the residents that can't fly their own flag. Really? If you live in a community that has a mix of other people, other countries, other other minorities, you know, people from other countries, and they have a, fro- a problem with you flying your American flag... You know, it's it's ridiculous. This is our country. This is the United States. I mean, I'm sure any other country, if you live in Australia, you can fly your Australian flag. Nobody's going to tell you to take it down. But we are so afraid of pissing people off. And we're, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want, you know, it's all political correctness. Bull crap. It's bull crap. Um, <clears throat> this is not the point. This is the United States. We should be able to fly our flag, said Avencula. It turns out Avencula is right. According to federal law, the American Flag Act of 2005, which is ridiculous why it even had to be put into place, but I digress. Um... It is let's see act of 2005 and signed into law in 2006 allows residents and condos to fly an American flag. So the lady in Whitehall here near me should not have been told because it's already a federal law. Um, the general manager of the rotunda didn't want to go on camera, but says because the news station because the news station brought this to their attention, they're going to change the condo rules. General Manager Jim Tracy writes, after careful review of the current law, we will update our regulation to permit the display of an American flag at any time. We will not permit the display of any other flag other than the United States flag. It goes on to show rules can be changed for the better. This was absolutely the right battle to fight. I'm not only doing this, for myself, but for all veterans who fought and the proud Americans out there, said Avencula. Uh, Avencula says, goes on to say, while the U.S. flag is fine, the Marine Corps flag is not. It has to come down because there is no law protecting to fly it. Homeowners associations recently have been enforcing the rules of prohibiting flying American flags. It doesn't make any sense to me why this even has to be a law. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why, why this is even on the books? Why this is even a thought? This is America. Uh, business owner threatened with jail time for flying an American flag. Business owner threatened with jail time for flying an American flag. A Georgia man was slapped with a ticket and threatened with jail time after he refused to remove an American flag that's been flying outside of his business for more than 30 years. An Albany Code Enforcement officer alleged that Tom Giriak, his flag, was in violations of the city's sign ordinance. The standard size American flag was posted on a pole outside Gint. Geriak? Garak? I can't remember how I said it the first time. It's a weird G I E R Y I C. Geriak. We'll, we'll say that. The standard American size, the standard size American flag was posted on a pole outside Geriak's automotive repair shop. It's been 30 years, Geriak told Fox News. She told me my flag was in the city's right of way. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Ack said his trouble started last week when a group of retired Marines showed up and offered to put up a new flag. When he returned from lunch, Gary Ack was met by code enforcement, a code enforcement officer telling him either remove the American flag or face fines. The Albany city manager did not return multiple calls seeking comment. The Al- uh, I was shocked. I was shocked, man. Got to act it out. I was shocked, man. Uh, complete loss for words, he recounted. I told her I wasn't going to be be moving my flag. 
he said he was told that if he didn't comply, he could face a thousand dollars a day fine and up to 60 days in jail. But the auto shop owner decided to stand his ground. Good for you, Giriak. Um, she stomped off to her car. <laughs> she stomped off to her car, got her ticket book and demanded my license. He said, she wrote me a ticket for flying an American flag on the city's right of way. What exactly does that mean? The city's right of way. I don't know. Uh, let's see. After Gary Ack raised a ruckus with city officials, his ticket was later reduced to a warning, but he was told the flag still had to be moved by exactly one foot. One foot. Thousand dollars a day fine. <laughs> Sixty days in jail for twelve inches. Um <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. I'm boiling inside, he said. They didn't demand that I move it. They suggest I do it as a gesture of goodwill. I don't think I'd do it. I mean, after all the shit that they put him through, I don't think I'd do it. <laughs> I just don't think I would. Uh, <laughs> Gary Ack said he received all sorts of support standing his ground from folks dropping by to shake his hand and others who offered to pay or help pay any possible fines. What a great community this is. Where was this at? Uh, uh, Georgia. Georgia. Albany, Albany, Georgia, it looks like. Uh, I got, I got 15 business cards. He said he got 15 business cards from lawyers offering their services. Gary Ack said he wants the law changed. My local city manager has been more, more than fair, he said. He stands behind me, but the law is the law, and his hands are tied. Really? He blamed the entire incident on government getting involved in areas they don't need to be involved. Exactly. You don't need to be involved. Government, stay out of our business. It's our business. Our business. Stay away. The point is, I'm an American, he said. That's the American flag. That's American soil. It belongs to me, and I'm going to fly it. I'm going to fly it where I want to fly it, as long as it's not a safety hazard, and it's not. So, <laughs> wow. That, that, that story kind of baffled me, too. Um, it's... It's like he said, it's an American flag. Why are you gonna, why are you gonna give the guy fines? Why are you gonna give the guy jail time? It doesn't make sense. Here's the third story, and this is the, the last story that, I mean, there's many more. You can Google it. Um, this one bothered me the most. Uh, I mean, everybody knows on September 11th, we lost, I think, 343 firemen in New York City. And, I mean, that's rough. These guys, I mean, I still see today fire trucks flying a huge ass flag on the back of their truck. It's, it's baffling. Here, here we go. Um, this story came out on September 9th this year, just a few days before September 11th. Suburban firefighters told to remove flags from lockers and helmets. Let me say that again. Suburban, this is uh, Maywood, a suburb of Chicago called Maywood, I believe. Um, a suburb. Suburban firefighters told to remove American flags from lockers and helmets. Are you kidding me? Some firefighters at a West Suburban Fire Department have been relieved of their duties for, refuse, for refusing to remove patriotic flags from their lockers and helmets. Maywood Fire Chief Craig Brana, creep by the way, says that there's a culture of racism. There's a culture of racism in the fire department and issued a memo saying all decals and stickers, including American flags and military stickers, to be removed from lockers and helmets. He shows a picture 
I don't understand the picture. This picture has nothing to do with an American flag. Maybe it has something to do with racism. He shows a picture of a monkey smoking a cigarette that was taped onto a locker to prove it. To prove what? The racism? It's a monkey smoking a cigarette. It's funny. It's not racist. It's it's like the cat playing the piano or whatever. It's As a fire chief, I cannot afford nor tolerate it, he said, because these firefighters, an African-American man, a Cuban man, African-American. Let me digress for a second. That term to me is backwards. It should be an American of African descent or African heritage. Now, if you came over from Africa and became an American after you got here, then I think you can be called African American because you are an African first. You were from Africa before you were from America. But if you are born here, I just, I mean, like, an Italian American. No, you're an American before you're an Italian if you were born in America. So, sorry. Anyway, these firefighters, an African American, a Cuban, and two white men say that the chief's allegation of racism couldn't be further from the truth. That picture was from about 10 years, about 10 years old and he isn't even up on the locker anymore. This, and that was a, all a joke between two firefighters and that firefighter in question is now a lieutenant and does not have a locker like that. Those tell WGN, WGN is Chicago. Th- those, those, those tell WGN the tension started with the chief ordering an American flag to be mo- removed from the inside of fire station two. It was a new flag the firefighters had bought with their own money to replace the tattered old one that had been up for three years. When they weren't told why, firefighters put American flags on their lockers. Then came the memo. When David Flowers Jr., the union president, wouldn't take down the Marine decal on his locker, the same locker that was his father's, a Maywood firefighter and Vietnam veteran, he was relieved of duty and sent home. Wow. If someone had a problem with a Marine Corps decal, you take this to heart. The flag is attached to our uniform, Flowers said. Uh, the chief says he has nothing against the American flag or veterans. He just wanted to make a blanket rule that covers everything. You want to be politically correct is what you want to do. You don't want to offend anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. These firefighters say the American flag is special and it's off limits. They have a meeting with Chief Brana at 1 p.m. the next day on September 10th. I wasn't able to find a follow-up story for that. I mean, you're you're worried about offending people with the American flag. I mean, that's like Chevrolet being worried about offending people with the Chevrolet bow tie emblem or Ford, but the Ford emblem. It's stupid. It's people were just worried about being politically correct and not hurting people's feelings. We have a, fl- <laughs> when I walked into work one day, um, our maintenance man, he put up a two, it's probably a two, man, I'd say maybe a three story American flag on the wall. I mean, I work in a big warehouse and this, this flag was gigantic. And, uh, we have, we have, um, foreign people working there and he said that he got a lot of dirty looks when he was putting that flag up so it doesn't make sense to me if you live here it's an American flag this is our country if you live in China and you're proud of your country and you're proud of your patriotism fly the Chinese flag if you live in England, fly the, the 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 English flag, the British flag. If you live in Germany, fly that flag. If you live there and you're proud of your country and you're proud of your heritage and you're proud of where you're from, fly it. Show everybody. Show your patriotism. 
put up your flag. And if somebody comes to you and says, you have to take that down, slam the door in their face and tell them that there's a federal law stating that they cannot do that. So, um, that's all I got for you today. I, I tried not to, to swear. I don't like doing that on here. Uh, and I tried to try to be informative and you can see me too. If you're looking, I hopefully, uh, I get this put up. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you for listening and thank you for just giving me a few minutes. I like that. Monkey Basement Productions. Monkey Basement.